Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In my previous video, I introduced you to the ADS 1115 16-bit analog to digital converter. So in this video, I will discuss the ADS 1115's functions and its commands. The ADC contains four registers, which each register stores 16 bits of data, providing a total of 64 bits. When the ADS-1115 is first powered, all the registers reset to their default values and will automatically enter slate mode without performing any conversion. This relieves systems with tight power supply requirements from encountering a surge during power up. During operations, you can also send a reset command to have the same effect as a power cycle. This is done by setting the general call address byte followed by the reset command byte on the I2C bus. The eighth bit in the general call address must be a zero for the ADS-1115 to respond to the reset request. Now keep in mind, any device on the I2C bus that recognizes the command will also reset. Next we have the conversion register. Contains the 16-bit converted value that can range from negative 32,768 to positive 32,768. Bit 15 determines if the value is negative or positive. Now, although the register can store a negative number, the ADC can only sample positive voltages. A negative number only occurs when measuring the difference between it two different inputs. Next, we have the high-low thresholds. Now, these can be programmed with an upper and lower value that determines when the alert ready pin should be activated. Next is the configuration register. Now, this contains the parameters in which the ADS-1115 operates. Each bit sets an option that instructs the ADC on the current task. The ADC will continue with its current instructions until they are either changed, the ADC's power cycle, or it's reset. Now, these registers can be accessed directly through the I2C bus using an address pointer that is followed by the read-write command. To send the commands, the ADS-1115 address pin needs to be configured to use one of four possible addresses. The default address is 0x48. However, it is recommended to connect the address pin to ground to prevent unwanted address changes. If you connect the pin to the voltage supply, this gives the address 0x49. Connecting it to the serial data line gives, provides the address 0x4a and connecting it to the serial clock line gives the address 0x4b. Now, it is important to know that if you need to use the serial data address, be sure to hold the serial data line low for at least 100 nanoseconds after the serial clock line goes low. Now, this will ensure that the device decodes the address correctly during communications. Let's take a closer look at the configuration register. Now this reveals the default configuration of the analog digital converter. There are nine options that can be used to instruct the ADC's function. Here we have bit 15, which serves two functions. It can start a single conversion, or it can indicate the device's current status. If the ADC is in one-shot mode, writing a 1 to bit 15 starts the conversion. If you are reading the bit from the register, the bit indicates the ADC status. A 0 means that the ADC is converting, and a 1 means that the ADC is idle. Now, by default, this bit indicates the status of the ADC. Here we have the bit 14 through 12. Now, these control the inputs of the multiplexer. Bit 14 tells the multiplexer if the inputs will be set in comparator mode 
or as single input. Bits 13 and 12 indicate which input to use for the conversion. Now, here's an example. Uh, if we set the bits as 001, respectively, this instructs the ADS1115 to compare input A0 to input A3, known as comparator mode. We are comparing two different inputs. If we set the inputs as, or set the bits as 100, this instructs that the ADC to compare A, input A0 to common ground. This is known as single end input comparator, since it is referenced to ground. Uh, next, we have the bits 11 through 9. Uh, this sets the uh, full scale range of the programmable gain amplifier between a positive and negative 0.256 millivolts and 6.144 volts. For example, if the maximum input voltage is, say, positive or negative 3 volts, then bits 11 through 9 would be 001. This programs a PGA for 4.096 volts. Bit 8, this sets the operating mode. In continuous mode, the ADC will complete a conversion, then repeat the cycle until it receives new instructions, power cycled, or it's reset. In one shot mode, the ADC will complete the conversion and then enter sleep mode, powering down until the device receives new instructions. Now, this configuration is perfect when battery operated operation is needed because power is only consumed during a conversion. The ADC can still communicate in this state and draws very little current. Now we have bits seven through five, which sets the data rate, uh, or you can call it samples per second. For example, uh, 000, zero sets the data rate to eight samples per second, while 100 sets the data rate to 128 samples per second, respectively. Now, the time it takes to complete a conversion depends on the samples per second that you select. For example, eight samples per second takes 125 milliseconds to complete a single conversion, whereas 860 samples per second takes roughly 1.1 milliseconds. Now, you need to be careful selecting the data rate that's over 64 samples per second. The reason for this is that the input signal is not stable. The resolution output may degrade. The higher the data rate, the more noise that may generate. So if you're using high data rates, it's recommended to use a resistor, capacitor, inductor filtering to help stabilize the input signal during sampling. The RCL filtering will help reduce external noise from being part of the measurement. Next, we have bits four through zero, which do work in conjunction with the high and low thresholds. Bit four sets the comparator's mode. So when you're using traditional mode, if the converted data value exceeds the high threshold value, the alert ready pin will enter the active state. The alert ready pin will remain in this active state until the conversion value falls below the low threshold value. If you were to use the window mode, the alert ready pin will remain inactive if the converted data does not exceed the high or fall below the low thresholds. Here we have bit three. Now this sets the alert ready pin status or the polarity, I should say. This tells the ADC that when, act, when active, the, when active the pin will either be pulled low or it will be pulled high, meaning that if it's a natural state is in high, then when it becomes active, it will be pulled to low and then vice versa. Next, we have bit two. Uh, this determines if the alert ready pin is cleared when the data value is within the margin of the high and low threshold or does it remain in the active state 
until the conversion data is read by the, uh, the microcontroller or if the microcontroller sends an SM bus acknowledgement to the ADC and reads the ADC I2C's address. Uh, we'll go into, into that a little bit more in detail when we begin to program the ADC. Now finally, we have bits 1 and 0. Now these disab can disable the comparator or it can set the number of conversions to complete when a threshold has been reached before activating the alert ready pin. Now this comes in handy because if you're wanting to use the alert ready pin, as fast as this thing goes, you wanna make sure that if it's gonna activate the pin, then it's gonna to have to be at least one, two, or four conversions before it activates the pin. And that's what this is for. And again, you know, we'll go over uh, the specifics uh, later on. Now, the alert ready pin can be used as a conversion ready pin by setting the high threshold most significant bit to one, the most significant by bit of the low threshold to zero, and set the configuration registers bits one and zero to any other value than one one, respectively. Now, in this mode, the alert ready pin will set an eight microsecond pulse at the end of each conversion in continuous mode. In one shot mode, the pin will go active low if the configuration bit three is set to zero. Now, in this part, what I wanna do is give you an example of setting the bits. Now, I'm going to, we're going to instruct the ADS 1115 to convert a five volt signal on input A0 in continuous mode at 128 samples per second in traditional mode, pulsing the alert ready pin high after the fourth conversion. So what would you think the configuration register would look like? Now, if you want a moment, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can uh, decipher as to how the bits should be set and then resume and we'll show you what it's gonna be. Let's check and see uh, how close you are. Now, the register should look like this. Bit 15 is zero since we are using continuous conversion. Bit 14 is one for single in mode with bits 13 and 12 having 00, zero respectively for input A0. This is to compare input A0 to ground. Bits 11 through 9 are 000, zero, zero for full scale range of 6.144 volts. And this is because of, since the maximum voltage is five volts. Bit 8 is 0 because this is going to be in continuous mode. Bits 7 through 5 are 1, 0, 0 respectively for 128 samples per second. Bit 4 is 0 for traditional mode. Bit 3 is 1 for alert ready pin to go into high state at the end of the conversion. Bit two is zero for no latching. It's going to pulse the alert ready pin at the end of the conversion. And bits one and zero are one and zero respectively to activate the alert ready pin after the fourth conversion. So if you did get these bits right, congratulations. You are better understanding on how this thing works and how to program it. Uh, but we will go into more details and the instructions and all that in the next video. Now, with the configuration set, there is still one last thing. We need to change the high threshold most significant bit to one and the low threshold most significant bit to zero. This will program the alert ready pin as a ready pin. Now, if you do wanna change it, say, into one-shot mode, which bits would you need changed to make this work properly? Again, we'll pause the video, let you think about that for a moment. Now, now to answer to the question, which bits would need change to make this pro work properly in one shot mode, we would need to change bit 15 to one to initiate a single conversion 
and bit 8 to 1 for one shot mode. And we also need to set bits 3 to 0 for alert ready pin to be active low. So, did you get those correct? Now, as you can see, when you need the ADC to do a conversion, you send the command, the ADC performs the conversion, powers down, and pulls the ready pin to act below. The ADC is now in low power mode until the next instruction. So as you can see, the 1115 is flexible and programmable on the fly. When using the ADS 1115, you must always use a positive voltage signal. However, you can measure negative voltages by using a precision operating operation amplifier to configure the invert and to configure to invert the signal from negative to a positive signal. Then you can program the microcontroller to treat the output data as a negative. Now, when you're using the high and low thresholds, the high threshold needs to be higher than the low threshold. The converted data will always be positive except when comparing two different inputs. The converted data is then the difference between the two inputs. Well, this concludes this video. I hope it was informative and that you have a better understanding on how programming the ADS-1115 analog digital converter uh, works and what all the bits do. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to write a program to that will be able to program the ADS with the Adreno. So stay tuned. I hope to see you there. Uh, be sure to click on the subscribe button so you'll be notified of all the uh, videos that I have coming up. Uh, also be sure to click on the, the uh, notification bell so you are notified whenever I upload a new video. I am your host, Mr. Fixit. Thank you for watching.